welcome back to my channel um as you can see i am no longer pregnant so i wanted to talk to you guys about my birth experience with twins i've been meaning to do this vlog for a while and the twins are actually like two months old now so it's been pretty hectic um but i'm glad i'm finally able to share it with you guys because i've gathered like everything that i needed to tell you guys from the experience in the hospital how i went into labor uh what it was like to bring them home um there's a lot so here we go as you can see i have now delivered my babies i hadn't told anyone other than our family and close friends what we were expecting but i had a boy and a girl this is cora uh enzo is the boy and he's sleeping with his dad right now he's taking a nap i tried to put her down but she wasn't having it so she's gonna be part of the video today so first things first, I wasn't sure if you watched my previous videos, I wasn't sure if I was going to have a vaginal delivery or a C-section. It all depended on if both twins were head down. Around week 36, she actually was the baby on top. She was twin B. <laughs> and she was actually a uh, breach for most of the pregnancy. Well, transverse, she was like, across my belly she did flip around week 36 and she was head down so for a moment there i thought that i was going to be able to deliver both of them vaginally and then literally two days later she decided to flip around again and so she stayed that way and she didn't end up going head down so when i did go into labor i quickly realized that i wasn't going to really do a vaginal birth that it was going to end up being a c-section because she never flipped back around the day before I gave birth, I was really, really, really exhausted and just fatigued and upset and just nothing was comforting me. And so the next day when I woke up, the first thing I remember saying to him was, I want to go to the park. I just want to be in the park. I want to be outside. I want to be in nature. And so we grabbed a blanket, we grabbed our speaker, and we decided to just go sit in the park and relax because I just wanted to pop and I wanted to just be in nature and not at home on my couch. We get to the park, we sit down on our blanket and as I'm sitting there, I start having this like back pain, but it was like in the middle of my back. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is triggered from a previous injury that I had a few years ago during a workout. And so I thought I'm in the end of my pregnancy, you know, certain injuries get triggered, I guess. Maybe that's what it is. So I rolled it out, I was just like, no, Obviously, it's not labor because I always hear that back pains that are labor pains happen in your lower back. So I didn't think anything of it, honestly, but I was uncomfortable. And so I'm sitting there on the blanket and we're listening to music. And the whole time, I'm just like trying to find a way to relax because the back pain is like, it's more of a discomfort. I don't want to say it was pain, but it was definitely uncomfortable. So I'm sitting on the grass and I'm like adjusting myself and trying to accommodate myself. And then I tell him like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, but it hasn't gone away. And I'm trying to like stretch and you know, it, at this point I'm, I'm like huge. So it's already hard um, to stretch and like move around. But I was just happy to be at the park. We leave the park and I'm still a little uncomfortable, but I'm excited to go back home at this point to sit on the couch and just kind of like relieve the back pain. I thought maybe sitting on, a gra on the grass on a flat surface, you know, was maybe not helping me. We get home and I don't know what happened, but that pain got so much worse. At this point, Morgan had this crazy idea that he read online, which was a restaurant in Georgia um, that specializes in this eggplant recipe, eggplant Parmesan recipe that supposedly helps induce labor. There was a bunch of testimonials on their website uh, of women who ate this recipe and then like went into labor almost like the same day or the next day. So when we got back from the park, he was like, let me leave you at home and I'm gonna go get the ingredients to make this eggplant parm. And that was our plan. We were like, okay, this eggplant parm, you know, people were raving about this on the website. I, I could go into labor, this would be great. When I get home, my back pain is worse. It got so bad, I'm crying. And I'm just like, oh my God, I never had this type of pain in, in, in that particular area of my back, in the middle of my back, again, where that injury was. So the whole time I'm thinking, something is triggered on my back with this previous injury. It gets to the point that it's so bad that I'm crying. I'm like hugging a pillow on the couch. Morgan's out buying eggplants. And I'm just like, let me call him and let him know how I'm feeling. Give him a call and I'm like, you gotta come home right now because I'm having crazy back pains and I don't think I'm in labor, but I'm just, I'm really uncomfortable. He comes back with these eggplants and like ricotta cheese and Parmesan. 
<laughs> and I decide to call my doctor. I'm like, let me just call them and let them know what I'm feeling because they might ask me to come in, you know? She's like, you gotta come in because you're 37 and a half weeks with twins at this point. And it could be anything. And if you're in that much pain, you know, we have to find out what's going on. Thankfully, we had everything ready. Our hospital bags have been packed at this point for maybe two weeks or more it was even in the car i remember so like we i literally just put the outfit i wanted to go in the hospital to the hospital with and we took off we're driving to the hospital we still don't think that that's the day we're going to deliver these babies because the whole time we're like we're gonna get sent home it's just my back you know it's just some pain they're probably just gonna like alleviate it for me and send me home we get to the hospital and you know they start doing the uh the scan for the heartbeat you know they put the, the bands on my belly to check their heartbeats to make sure they're fine everything is fine but then the nurse comes in and she's like you're contracting that pressure you're feeling that's contractions and they're telling me i'm contracting but i'm not feeling pain so i'm just like okay i guess i'm contracting i'm just feeling like this pressure but i thought it was because the babies were moving she's monitoring my contractions at this point they're five minutes apart but the level of pain was maybe like a three you know it wasn't painful it was more like every time it happened i just felt like oh this is, you know i feel the pressure i feel like my 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 belly kind of like contracting but i wasn't feeling pain like that so they're five minutes apart right which usually is when you're supposed to go to the hospital so they're monitoring me at this point to see if i'm gonna have these babies so morgan and i are just like holy crap like we just came here for this back pain and you might actually be in labor i'm on the bed I'm contracting every five minutes. The nurse comes in and says, the doctor's gonna come in and check your cervix to see if you've dilated. I'm, at this point, we're like, oh my God, oh my God, this might happen like today. It's like six o'clock in the afternoon when we walk in the hospital. At this point, when they're checking my cervix and stuff, it's probably 7 p.m. I had been there for an hour. The doctor comes in. She's the doctor that's gonna be doing the, the delivery. So I introduce myself, we say hi. You know, I, I liked her right away. She checks my cervix and she's like, you're one centimeter dilated. So now I'm, I'm like, oh my God, this might actually be happening. <laughs> I'm 37 weeks and maybe like two days. So they were at a great gestational age to be born. You know, they weren't too early. Twins normally can be born uh, anytime between 35 and 38 weeks. 38 weeks is actually considered a full term for twins. I'm one centimeter and they're like, okay, well, we're gonna keep monitoring your contraction. They kept asking me how the pain was it didn't go past maybe like a four i want to say or a five on the on that scale the contractions were still five minutes apart it's now been two hours they check my cervix again and i'm still only one centimeter this one is still breached cora is still breached so they know now that and i know now that it's going to be a c-section it's more about will we do it today or not because technically i wasn't in active labor meaning the hours were going by but my cervix wasn't dilating any further what she said was they didn't have a compelling reason to do my c-section other than my contractions are five minutes apart and they would hate to send me back home because i'm 30 minutes away from this hospital so it's kind of this like gray area where the doctor's like there's not a compelling reason you're not completely in active labor but we also don't want to send you home all i know is that she came back like 10 minutes later and was like we're gonna do the c-section so now i'm just like holy crap like the babies are gonna be here within an hour or two you know it's real and me and morgan are just like freaking out we're excited we're feeling so many things a little bit of nerves start coming in but not too bad i was mostly excited so we messaged everyone and we let everyone know uh it's happening they start preparing morgan uh for the operating room so they give him some scrubs and uh, you know the hat the little um, net hat whatever they start uh preparing me for surgery the hospital that we went to was insanely amazing i mean i if I could review and give them five stars every day, I would. It was great care, great nurses, great attention. I mean, as I said, I was nervous about the C-section, but they made me feel so, so relaxed. I, I barely even felt nervous by the time I went into the room, the operating room. You know, I was nervous about feeling like I wouldn't be heard, that if I was uncomfortable, I had a pain or a concern, because in the operating room, it feels like they're going a, at a mile a minute. You know, the doctor's doing things, the nurses are doing things. There's so many people in there. <clears throat> that I thought I would feel drowned out, you know? So I was nervous, but not once did I feel that way. Every time I opened my mouth or even, you know, sighed or did anything, they were like, somebody was there to address it. And that meant a lot because that felt very comforting, especially for someone that had never done a C-section um, and having twins is already risky, you know? So it, it felt so comforting in that room that the minute I said anything, they were right there. At this point, they, they let Morgan in. So now he's on my side. 
uh, and we're both just looking at each other like it's about to happen. While we're talking and looking at each other, we hear a cry. They pulled the baby out. They pulled the first baby out, which was the boy, Enzo. So we hear his cry and we look at each other like, oh my God, like that happened so fast. I had been on the operating table maybe five minutes, not even. Then finally, uh, you hear a second cry within seconds. So they were born on the same minute at 11.42 p.m., just seconds apart. So they bring the babies over to Morgan. The nurses were so sweet. They grabbed my phone, they grabbed my camera and they helped us take pictures of him, of the babies. They grabbed my camera and took it with them when they were cleaning the babies up to take pictures of them. I mean, they were just so amazing. We did know we couldn't take video in the operating room, but I wanted him to take photos and the nurses were sweet enough to kind of do all of that for us. As soon as I was sewn up, um, they definitely put me in another room with the twins immediately and handed them over to me. Um, and I felt totally fine with that. And we were at the hospital for maybe, I wanna say three days. I did have to get two blood transfusions because my blood was low after the C-section. The babies were fine. They were perfectly healthy, which I'm so happy. They were each uh, about six pounds. She was six pounds, two ounces, and the boy was five pounds and 15 ounces. I didn't get to use everything that I put in my hospital bag, by the way, it was like, a lot of that stuff was just like extra fluff at this point. It's true what they say, like you definitely bring more stuff than you need because the hospital does provide a lot. I did breastfeed at the hospital. It was really sweet. I used uh, my breastfeeding pillow for twins, so I was tandem feeding them both. Are you snoring? <laughs> she is snoring, girl. <laughs> um, no. Oh. It's so sweet when they like hold your chest here when they're sleeping. While we were at the hospital, we decided um, that we weren't going to have any visitors there because they only allowed, I think, one visitor at a time. The one person I did want to visit was my, my older daughter, Leanna, and they said they wouldn't allow her to come because of COVID, they weren't going to allow any kids under 18. They that uh, we delivered the babies. Uh, we asked at the hospital if she can come and they said that she could. So Morgan literally left and went to pick her up that evening. That was the best thing that could have happened. If there was one person I wanted there, it was her. Uh, and when I found out that she could, I mean, Morgan couldn't have left the hospital any sooner. He went to pick her up, he brought her back and she came to see the baby. She like teared up, she was so happy. If you guys don't know, Leanna has been an only child, she's 12. And so for her, having these twin siblings was a blessing and she was so excited to meet them at the hospital. I mean, she held them. It was, it was really beautiful that she got to come. I was so, so happy, I cried. we went home there was this tropical storm going on and we were really concerned because we're like wait we want to go home but the storm is crazy and thankfully we got discharged late in the late afternoon that day and already on the way home there was like flooding happening on the highways but we made it home right at the like cusp of when the storm went insane in new york city i mean there was flooding there was cars floating we saw videos of cars floating on the highway people had to leave their cars and like in the like in the middle of the road and go home um walking i mean the videos that we saw the next morning after we came home with the twins were insane so we were like thank god that we got this charge right on time i'm gonna go put her down because um i'm about to break a sweat <laughs> so hopefully she doesn't give me a hard time and i'll be back oh my gosh she opened her eyes her down and hopefully she stays because she opened her eyes and she looked at me and they're at that point where they notice when you walk away it's scary scary hours <laughs> okay i'm back she definitely did not stay down but <laughs> i handed her to her dad and she's feeding now so let's finish mm -hmm. 